Hey YouTube, it's Karash1990, and today I have my Middle Earth CCG deck collection. Wondering why there's a binder here? I actually keep the four decks that I have in this binder because I don't really get to play this game a whole lot. And I wanted it to be in a safe place where I can kind of like flip through and, you know, look at it and just admire my like collection I have here. Um... I will say I'm really glad I got into this game when I did, which is about a, about two years ago. I um, I randomly came across Team Covenant's stream of this game on YouTube. Otherwise, I had never even heard of this game before. And they were talking about the Challenger decks. And I found a sealed brick of them for, at the time, was like the going rate. Probably a little more expensive than what it was going for. And holy crap, am I glad I bought it because it's like about triple the cost now compared to what I got it for then. And these decks are a lot, mainly like challenger deck cards, though I did buy some like random bulk collections after getting the challenger decks that were like unlimited and limited cards. And the decks in here aren't, they're not, there's not like a whole lot of depth to them. Um, I didn't want to go too crazy with this game. I just like playing it in a more simpler version. And I thought it was a great solo playing game, which this game is very fun just playing solo, which was, again, one of the reasons why I bought into this game in the first place too. So the decks I have are all based on, I have two wizard decks and two Nazgul decks. And there's just going to be glares on the pages. So you're just going to have to deal with that. But uh, I have it set up with the starting company, and then from there it goes into the rest of the deck. And this is my Radagast, like Elves, <clears throat> like aggro -y sort of a deck. And the whole point of this deck is you want to cycle through your deck as fast as possible, scoring all the marshalling points that you need. And you, you, wanna, you wanna be able to call a council before your opponent does. And the way you do that is you travel a lot and you travel as far as you can to get a bunch of forest icons and just draw a ton of cards. That's kind of Radagast's like shtick. So you want to be drawing just a crap ton of cards every turn. And I have enough marshalling points in here to kind of get like the bare minimum along with certain enemies that you'll be defeating. And it's just that a lot of like elven themed cards. And I really like Doors of Night, especially, gosh, look at this old artwork of Doors of Night. Oh, I love it. This The art in this game is just mind-blowing. Um, this is one of my favorite pictures in the game. Though, this right here, as I knock the camera, this right here is my favorite. This That is just high fantasy to the max. It's also like a pretty good card, especially with uh, this. But um, they all have like, again, they all have like a like a good good side of the deck theme and then a theme to the bad side of the deck. This one's all about wolves and making things in the forests or the wilderness stuff. And Slayers are just good. And then there's the side decks for them. And then it has like a um, roadblock kind of a side package you go into with the side deck. And then this is just a bunch of utility stuff. And then I have the locations that the deck uses. I also really like using... I'm probably one of the only people out there that likes it. But I like using the region cards too. I, I need a lot more of them. But I have enough region cards to use this deck with just pure region cards. I like keeping card games in with just the cards, if that makes any sense. I don't really like having to have a bunch of other access, like outside of game accessories. Like this game, you can use a map, and it really feels like you're traveling across the map, which is one of the cool things about it. But I like just the, the aesthetic feel that the region cards have. And again, it's, it's keeping everything contained to the cards and not needing extra things you could do starter location like haven movement if you want but it's really linear really boring i like the region cards uh, again i'm probably the only person out there that will say that but that is my radagast deck and this is my palando dwarves greedy treasure finder guys sort of a deck again there's palando right uh, right there yeah and it's just it's like a dwarven theme and i try to theme the sleeves around the color of the stuff too so like doors i thought were fitting for these dragon shield like copper sleeves and yeah it's just a bunch of stuff to um you have all your like horde items which can be found where dragons are basically and a lot of ways to 
get around the automatic dragon attacks that happen at those locations. So those locations are pretty dangerous on their on their own. Their dragons can just straight up kill your characters. And I have like an orc theme with this deck because you know orcs be in mountains and stuff. So it's like a swarmy sort of a bad guy strategy that was in one of the uh, challenger decks. And then there's the side deck for it. Nothing too crazy. Just more treasure items, more units, and there are like uh, uh, factions and allies and stuff. And just kind of a little controly package with the bad guy cards and, again, the locations. And then the bad guy decks, I have a... Um, I forgot which... Oh, yeah, the Witch King. And then the other dude whose name I, like, straight up just can't pronounce because their names are crazy looking. But, uh... Yeah, using the mouth of Sauron, and basically the witch, or the uh, the witch king is awesome. You give him uh, Fell Rider, and he just becomes this like twelve twelve like powerhouse that's super hard to kill, and he can just kill anything. And I essentially have him flying around on his Fell Beast, collecting certain items. These, this one, this one, and there is another one that he gets, maybe like this one or something. I don't know. He's basically on like a a one-man mission he goes alone and he just he finds these items i got a bunch of cool cards to go with them like that card just looks great though there's probably better cards than this but i really like this card while the other guys are recruiting your factions getting these cool items to do some shenanigans stuff with uh, other locations and uh, like attack avoidance and attack buffing type things and then i have like a spirit zombie hazard package with this deck pretty pretty straightforward there a lot of ways to get cards from your uh, side decks into your deck again doors of night i have it in almost every deck because i i really like doors of night and the this is the, the like newer artwork which is great you know it's it's cool i like the original works it's it's more classic looking and then there's more stuff to side into um things that work with the the witch king and then more controly type stuff. I mean, we have some uh, very situational, like spirit cards, and lure of nature is always as good. Lure of expedience is good. And then this card, exaltation of decay, goes good with like zombies. And then again, their locations. And then finally, this deck, which is all about like trolls and orcs, which uh, Lieutenant of Morgul's, like an awesome looking card. Look at that. I love the artwork in that card. And this guy's a beast too. This kind of kills anything. Yeah, what's this dude? Uh, uh, Dwar, that's it. I was getting him confused with uh, Hormoroth or whatever the heck that thing's name is. But Dwar is good because he essentially buffs the like attack of your other guys. Yeah, the prowess and body. So he makes your dudes kill more when he is at a Dark Haven. And then you put Bade the Rule on him because why not? And then I play a bunch of items. Man, I really get the glare off. Yeah, I play a bunch of items to like buff their attack. These are all worth points, you know, worth points, good with attacking. Again, same with these. You can avoid some stuff with those. And, yeah, it's this is like a very aggressive-y, aggro-y type deck. It's like the Radagast version for my bad guy decks. And then these use a, like, Dragon Drake package, which is cool because some of the artwork on these is just excellent. Quentin Hoover, um, amazing artist. It's unfortunate the guy passed away. And, yeah, more dragon-themed cards. And then this going into the side deck. We have some additional ways to score points. Usually what happens in these decks anyway. And then we have, like, a little roadblock package with some dragon support. And then to end things off, which <laughs> I have just enough sleeves in this binder to house these two uh, four decks. But, again, we have the locations. This one uses some different locations that my other bad guy deck doesn't. And, yeah, it's just, I love pulling this binder out every now and then, and it's like flipping through the pages in here and just kind of admiring the awesomeness that is this game. I want, like, I have two other decks. Like, I don't have a Sauron deck, and I don't have a Gandalf deck. I do want to make, I want a Gandalf deck to be, like, my main deck that I play solo, where these, I could just kind of pull them all out and have, like, a four-way game, and it'd be a lot of fun. But, um... I want to make a Gandalf solo deck where I'm making Aragorn the king and Arwen the queen and 
all that cool stuff. Maybe even try to force like a dunk in the ring kind of a package in there and make it really movie thematic. And I'm slowly trying to get singles for that. I'm missing just a couple cards, but I'm not in a rush. So it's kind of on the back burner for some of my other games. And I don't have a Saruman deck because I thought it was just really bland. Like you... You do the whole white tree sapling thing, you know, that's great. And he finds a Palantir and he stays at Isengard and he just abuses the Palantir while your hobbits go running around scoring points. I don't know. I just, it didn't really have anything going for me. I like being more aggressive, more adventurous in this game. Definitely more adventurous in this game. Uh, being a little more, a little more risky. I think all, all four of these decks, decks especially, especially Radagast, do that quite well. Eventually I want to get a Galadriel. For my starting characters and try and work that in but this deck's a little risky playing just two starting characters but i mean they're both they're both hard to kill but still i digress anyway that is my middle earth deck collection um thank you all for watching um if you have any advice on you know stuff to put the you know put in decks i don't know a whole whole lot about this game on like other games that i cover and play quite often so i'm always down to hear advice on that and i'm thinking tomorrow will be my jihad deck collection as i mentioned that deck collection is entirely made up of cards from the first booster set in fact from just one booster box and one sealed box of starter decks like a brick of starter decks and that was all i purchased to make the decks that i have anyway uh thank you all for watching again i'm loving all the comments that i've been getting recently uh, it's been cool interacting with just people i don't know on here and just talking about games and stuff i really appreciate it anyway i'll catch you all next time